How's it going, folks? Welcome back to the channel. So we start off today with the milliput that is now nice and solid and amazingly stayed attached to that piece of bark that I put it on. And we're going to finish off the drilling. It drilled really nicely through the milliput. I was quite surprised. Good product by the looks of it. Never used it before. A bit of a nightmare getting started again once you've had a uh, a bit of a rest from this job. Would have liked to have just smashed it out in one go, but it wasn't to be. So here is the time lapse. I think I was doing this for I don't know, well over an hour, a couple of hours maybe. But the jig worked fairly well. So this is the last few holes coming up. And we get to find out exactly how many holes out of 175 we ended up with. Okay, let's have a count. 168, 9, 170, 171 teeth. Which is not what we were going for. But at least they met up. Hmm. Right, next. Okay, so we got a 171 out of 175 teeth, which is not the end of the world. It means uh, that we need maybe two less teeth on our small cog for the same amount of rotation. Well, I haven't decided yet whether I want to try and put 98 teeth on it or 100 teeth on it. I haven't decided. But either way, it's uh, about 0.03% margin for error which is not bad when you consider I didn't mark out a single hole and we were relying on essentially one measurement on the end of that rod uh, and that was the measurement that was out so I measured that 36 mil wrong by maybe 0.1 of a millimeter and when you multiply that up 175 times you end up with uh, four missing teeth which I think is uh, acceptable. So we're working on the back of the piece, spinning at 800 RPM. And uh, tough bit of sycamore this, to be honest. It's pretty slow going. And all I was trying to do here is get rid of my mistake from the first, when I drilled the holes on the first time. Just cutting away the corner until those holes disappeared. And then just a bit of smoothing across the face. and it took about a million years to sand there was a bit of tear out in the back and uh, I got frustrated with it yesterday and uh, stopped sanding before I messed something up carried on this morning half past eight in the morning I was sanding anyway so this is the next day it's now sanded up to 600 grit quite nicely sticking on some sanding paste as always. Hmm. 
Now, before I turn this piece around, I just want you to see how small that mortise is. It's pretty small for supporting the weight of that piece, but there you go. So we finished it off with some shine juice, as ever. And I put three coats of shine juice on. And it came up lovely, almost like a mirror. Now, it's time to have a look at some of your fantastic work once again. And this piece was sent in by Peter Delico. And he labelled this piece one a uh, small piece. I don't know how small it is, but it looks fairly small. A nice laminated piece. Lovely work, Peter. Thanks for sending it in. And this is a beautiful resin rimmed bowl by Mike Pruitt from Chicago in the United States. That's lovely work, Mike. And thanks for sending it in. And if you'd like your work to be featured on the show, you can send your images to willmakeseverything at gmail.com. So, you can see I've turned it round and we're supported by the tiny, tiny mortise. And this is Operation Nerve Wracking. Didn't like it at all. But it had to be done. So I was just going as gently as possible. I did not want to get a catch on the edge of that with that tiny mortise. So this face was supposed to be the back originally. And I'd left it um, a little bit uneven, thinking that I was going to finish the back off the lathe. Uh, all the best laid plans and all that. So the first job was to flatten out nice and gently the area I was going to take away to reveal the teeth. So I'm just flattening off with the top area of the teeth. And here come the nerve wracking cuts. Put a fresh, e fresh edge on. I don't know about you lot, but I like to listen to music when I'm doing this kind of thing. It relaxes me a bit more when I'm doing nerve-wracking stuff like this. Okay, so we're going straight down into the teeth. Just taking little cuts and having a look. We're getting somewhere close now.
Still a couple of teeth not quite showing there. I thought I was all the way there, but I'm not. So we're going to do a couple more final nerve-wracking cuts. I've swapped to the smaller chisel for a little bit more control. It's a job to know when you're kind of when you're there. You don't want to take too much off doing this, otherwise you've got no teeth left. And there we go. That's as far as I'm going to go with those teeth. So the next job, as we've got to make another cog to go inside here, is to make that inner surface as flat as possible. You might have noticed I did tell you that I was going to sort that tool rest out, and I haven't done it. I think the only way that I can really sort that tool rest out is to cut the end off uh, the mount where it mounts onto the base, base plate and weld an extension on, but I'm, I'll be welding onto cast, and uh, I don't like doing that. So here I'm just marking out where the high spots are. And then we're going to do some pull cuts just to remove those high spots, get it as flat as we can. I've only shown you one of these, but I, I probably did this uh, five or six times. I should have used a permanent marker, because as soon as I turned the lathe on, I couldn't see those lines anyway. But <laughs> I sort of remembered where they were. see them in the camera a lot better than I could see them in real life. Okay, so that's got the majority of it flat. A trusty straight edge there. So you can see it's just the middle that's a bit high. And a bit of real time cutting for you now, so you can see how long it took to, to flatten this out. The old bumblebees, love it in here. Did you see that one we're just flying around? Pretty good. 
Yeah, it was pretty flat. Happy with that. So I modified my sanding block. Put some round edges on it. And I uh, did that for about five minutes. And that's about as flat as it needs to be for that cog to roll around on the inside. Should be fine. So I didn't go too crazy with the sanding on the inside. I think I went somewhere around 120 grit just to take the roughness out. And then it was time to clean up the faces of the teeth with the Dremel. Now I seem to have lost all the bits for the Dremel. So all I had was this uh, conical carbide burr, which did the job just fine. I would have liked something a little bigger, but there you go. Okay, so that's the end of this video, and here are your glamour shots, if you want to call them that, of the almost finished big cog. The teeth are as done as they need to be, I think they'll be absolutely fine. I've got some tricky math to work out how I'm going to do the um, small cog to run around inside there. But that's the job for tomorrow. So, thanks everybody for watching the video. And if you've enjoyed it, then consider subscribing and hitting the like button and all those good things. And I will see you tomorrow when we tackle the small cog. Cheers.